What's going on here today and tomorrow is a protest against the city council arbitrarily deciding to add fluoride to our drinking water, excluding no one. Everybody will be exposed to the fluoride. If you look at what Europe is saying, 96% of the countries in Europe, countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, England, and then on the other side of the world, even, even uh, the Chinese and Japanese said no to fluoride in their water. I wonder why. If it's so wonderful and so great, as Commissioner Fish keeps telling us, why is half the world saying no? Get it out. Why are there municipalities now saying, we made a mistake, we want out of this? Portland has been on the right side of this for years. The city council will not let you vote on it. They're going to do it on their own. And I don't think they're going to get five votes. They may get 4-1. Or maybe they will get five votes. Amanda Fritz is, is a question mark because she's running for office. And she may read some of the studies that people have been sending Sam Adams now for the last two weeks that have said, don't do this, this is not a good idea, this is toxic waste. I used to believe a long time ago that fluoride was just something that you put in your mouth to kind of slow down decay. That's what all Americans think, and they're wrong. It goes into your body. That's the problem. Nobody knows there are no long-term studies about what the effect of fluoride is on the body. There are some correlations between IQ and damage to the brain, but there are only correlations because nobody wants to find out the real truth because everybody says, it's wonderful, try it. That's what they said about asbestos. That's what they said about PCBs. That's what they said about smoking. Try it, you'll love it. DDTs. This council should be run out of office if they vote for this. Whoever votes for this should be a deal breaker. Out, be gone, get out. We don't want you in office anymore. And until we start doing that, they will keep doing this crap. They will spend $5 million on the plant to put the fluoride in the water. They will spend $600,000 a year to keep it going. Even though there's questions all over the place. Why don't they just slow up? Why don't they ask the people of Portland? And they have. And the people of Portland three times have voted it down. Shouldn't that tell our representatives something? Um, my name is Kelsey Dunlap. I'm currently an unemployed chemistry teacher. I think one thing that people don't understand is that the fluoride that they're putting in our water is actually an industrial waste product. Um, and I think that we should not have industrial waste products in our water. Um, I use a filter to filter those things out. Um, and a regular water filter won't filter fluoride out. Um, and I think it also comes down to choice. People talk about um, how you know the poor children don't have access to proper dental care, um, but they do have fluoride rinses with Portland Public Schools, um, which is a rinse you're not bringing into your body. Um, everyone deserves to have a choice. Okay, so since people have voted in the 1980s, all kinds of very high-level organizations have actually pulled down the levels of recommended fluoride treatments. So now it's it, it was one point per million, sorry, 1.0 per million, and now it's half per million, and they keep lowering it and lowering it and lowering it as they find detrimental effects. Who is finding the effects? Uh, different scientists throughout CDC. the world. CDC, exactly, EPA. Um, that that it, it's really, it's not difficult to find this out. We just have to look. Um, what I think we do need to look is where is this money coming from to push this suddenly from the city council? They're not being open with their sources of funding, why they're choosing to do this now. 
Um, frankly, I think at the bare minimum, this needs to be a choice for the people. Also, a lot of European countries do not use fluoride in their water. And we still have to think about our future generation to see, you know, what is good for them and what is bad. Why poison them? Why are we poisoning people? That is my question. When there are studies out there, Harvard just did a study and came out saying that fluoride is very bad for a kid's IQ. Why are we dumbing down our nation? Her neurological system is still developing. As far as I'm concerned, she doesn't need any fluoride topically or ingested. Neither do we. Have you made any studies of this? My own personal scientific studies? No, but I can read the ones through the CDC, the Harvard, and all of the other ones. You don't have to be a scientist to be able to read. So there is a lot of information out there already. There is a ton of information available already. Problem is, you gotta stop looking at the information that's provided to you via your television and magazines, because that's all bullshit. Well, there's a reason your tube of Crest says harmful if swallowed. So, and then they want to put it in the water. This is an industrial waste component trucked in from Florida and put into the Bull Run watershed. And whether, whether you think it helps your cavities or not, it's, we're going to be flushing it down the toilets. Every restaurant in Portland that prepares food will be using it. You won't be able to escape it. So I really oppose and resent that they're forcing me and my family to put a prescription-only drug, chemical, into my water. Um, if they're worried about cavities are on the increase, cavities have been linked to poverty. We know we have exploding population of hungry children in Oregon, so why don't we spend that five million dollars feeding them, give them some nourishment, a toothbrush maybe, schools, instead of putting this chemical in the water. Do your research and take the time to look. There are two sources that this type of fluoride um, comes from. One is mostly 80% of it comes out of a fertilizer plant in Florida and it's trucked all over the country and it's people who handle it have to wear hazmat suits. And then the other uh, place it comes from is the aluminum industry. Now these two industries when they do their business and they produce this hydrofluorosilic acid it is illegal for them to just dump it into the water because it is classified as a toxic waste. So they just truck it and say repackage it as a public health tool and then legally put it into the water. It's a known toxin to fish. Um, it's a bioaccumulator in your body. The National Research Council has said repeatedly it's an um, endocrine disruptor in your brain. So it makes no sense to me at all. Keep the water clean and pure. I spend enough time trying to get healthy and then they're going to wreck it all by dumping this in the water. Forced fluoridation is, really amounts to forced uh, prescriptions by politicians. And they're really so they're medicating the population and they're really being paid to do it. The fluoride industry has a lot of money and they're actually, they're, I don't want to say the word corrupting, but they're using campaign donations to get the city hall when they couldn't get the people to vote for this in three elections so far. They've, it's been voted down, so now they're going through the back door and they're going after the city hall. What we'd like to do is have a public debate because we believe that uh, about 99% of the facts line up on the side against fluoridation, especially with the new evidence coming out, new research. Harvard published their study showing a 500% increase in cancer in boys drinking fluoridated water. The CDC has now come out and said that we shouldn't mix infant formula with fluoridated water because of uh, damage to infants. And then there are studies uh, coming out of China, lower IQ from people drinking fluoridated water, thyroid problems. It's, it's adding up to mass toxification. And uh, if you look here, this is the product, or one of the products, and, and um, this is maybe fatal if swallowed, harmful if inhaled. On here it says, at the last word, do not swallow. Above that it says, contact a poison control center right away if you happen to swallow this product. Is so that's because of the fluoride? Yeah, the fluoride is the poison. Thank you. The lethal dose of fluoride is five grams. It's cumulative over a lifetime. So if you drink about 5,000 liters of optimally fluoridated water, in theory, you're dead. Okay? Now, you can be sick along the way. 
So how much do people drink and how do you dose them? Supposedly this is good for our teeth and there are some serious questions there because in Europe they don't fluoridate water and they have as good a dental health as we do. But assuming you like it and you think it's good for your teeth, how much should you drink? If you're a construction worker outside, you're drinking a lot more water than an office worker who's sitting inside. When do you get to 5,000 liters? It's a question. How do you, there is no way to optimally medicate people with drinking water. It's wrong, too. It, it takes away the freedom of choice, and um, which brings me back to the other thing. Put this to a public vote. Put it to a public hearing. Don't do this behind the scenes, backdoor deals. Uh, let, bring it out in the open. No more of this stuff. And I, and I say this to our, our uh, city council. What you're doing is wrong. This is the wrong way to handle things. Yeah. And I also know that this Mark Wiener character, who is the one who has been uh, providing the money and the background and the support and the influence to get this thing through, he's doing it this way through for his influential and highly financed backers, the fluoride industry, because they couldn't get the people of Portland to vote for it in the first place. People in Portland don't want it. They've said so three times. So what do they do? They're going to sneak it in the back door. It's wrong. This is not how we do politics in Portland. Is this Mark Wiener a lobbyist? He's a lobbyist and a political consultant. He is the king of the negative campaign in Portland. He perfected that, and he got all well three of these guys elected. But one thing that people aren't don't seem to be addressing very thoroughly in this whole debate is is, is the nutrition aspect of this. What? How does nutrition uh, contribute to oral health? And there's a. a, a book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by a doctor named Weston A. Price. And he's done a thorough, very thorough study. On, ex exactly. And he's done a very thorough uh, study about the the, uh, the effects of good whole, whole nutrient-dense foods on oral health. And that's something that's not addressed at all. So th th when they say poverty is that the people with poor people have worse oral health, it's a lot of what they're eating. They're eating a lot of processed foods and a lot of sugar, a lot of corn syrup and stuff like that. And I don't think that's been... Exactly right. That's yeah. a key point. Okay, Weston Price uh, was a dentist back in the... Uh, it, it did some studies back in the 20s and 30s on... Uh, had, uh, groups of people around the world that had, had traditional diets that, uh, and had uh, excellent teeth. He had to go through a, a, a number of mouths, uh, uh, scraping away a, a green plaque uh, uh, from teeth to, uh, to uh, examine them, and he found no uh, uh, decay underneath. Uh, uh, he's, uh, in his studies, he found that uh, there are certain things common in the various diets that uh, prevented tooth decay. It's a nutritional disease. Mainly this is an issue of choice. We want people to have all the choices they can have. It doesn't take a lot of rocket science to understand that it only takes 88 cents to buy a, a tube of fluoride toothpaste. And I'm just wondering what the nursing mothers and the people who have tiny, tiny babies are going to do. If they can't afford 88 cents for a, a tube of toothpaste, then how are they going to afford bottled water so they can mix it with their formula so their babies are not getting doses of fluoride. This is an issue about freedom. This is an issue about choice and this is an issue about people deciding their own path in life. I don't think people understand that if this goes through, that means that every glass of water you have in every restaurant, every taco stand you go to, every single swimming pool you go to, every shower you take, you're getting dosed with fluoride. There's not another drug on the planet that you self-dose and you dose unlimitedly. You can just dose yourself again and again and again. There's no prescription. There's no amount that you know is going to be toxic or dangerous to you. So the more water you ingest, the more showers you take, the more swimming pools you go to, the more fluoride you're going to be sucking down into your body. So basically, make sure that you have a choice whether you want to ingest a poison or not. Now, we're being told that we need to fluoridate our water to protect our children's teeth, and I, I find that an unfathomable argument. It's already known that 40% of children in the U.S. have damaged teeth due to excess fluoride. Um, your teeth are a window to your bones. If your teeth are damaged, your bones are getting damaged as well. 
Only 70% of cities still have fluoridated water in the U.S. and the cities that have taken fluoridation out of their water have, have seen a decrease in cavity rates in children. Cavities are a function of dental hygiene, uh, a healthy diet, and a healthy pH in the body. So putting a neurotoxin in your body isn't going to help. And that's, that, that is why I believe the cavity rates decline when they take it out of the water because the, the body is not having to deal with that additional toxicity in it and it's better able to handle um, what it needs to keep healthy teeth. So you're saying that uh, topically it's a good idea possibly, but... Topically it's a parental choice. I would prefer to, to have the, the healthy diet, the healthy pH, um, dental hygiene, but topically it can be a useful tool. And that's why the city of Portland already provides that to the children. Making all of us ingest a neurotoxin because some of our children have cavities is like making the entire city drink diet soda because we have a problem with obesity with some of our children. My drinking diet soda is not going to help that child next door. Me being a healthy example of a healthy life, healthy food, healthy pH, that might help that child. <laughs> And the other thing, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard about the Harvard University study that fluoride significantly lowers IQ in children. Um, and I just read something on the web today because I'd, I'd heard 99% of this is going to end up just going downstream anyway. So I thought, what about the fish? Fish, it turns out, it's a neurotoxin to fish as well as other animals, and including people. And um, they have trouble migrating. It affects their ability to migrate when they've been exposed to this toxin. And that means 99% of the water gets uh, flushed away. It's used for gardening, it's used for showering, for flushing the toilet. And so as an efficiency, really, you're talking about, you know, wasting 99% of whatever you're trying to do. And so... I think from an efficiency point of view, it's not very efficient. If you want to spend that money, then you can do a swish and spit you know, program in the school for little kids if they choose to sign up for it. But to force the whole city to uh, have that in their water, and then you know, now you're watering your plants with fluoride and uh, using it to make beer and you know, everything else that you do with it. So I, I think it's a, bad, it's a bad idea. And it should be voted on by the people.